Now I can see on your screen you have the old edge. Um, so what I would like to do today is see how you cope with researching, downloading and installing a program on your computer. And that program today is going to be Microsoft Edge, built on the Chromium um, browser, which is the same one that Chrome is built on. And uh, we're going to test drive it. So does that sound exciting? Well, I have no idea really what you're talking about because I don't even know what Edge is, so there. <laughs> right, we're off to a good start. So, um, first of all, we've, I've got a chat menu on my screen that uh, I have to get rid of. So, there we go. That's gone. Right, so... You've got Chrome open here. Let's minimize Chrome because let's try this whole exercise from the Edge browser that you don't know what we're talking about. How's that sound? Yeah. Yeah, so let's minimize Chrome. We can probably even close it if you like. Yes. That's good. So now we have nothing on our screen. We have nothing open apart from the Zoom meeting. So... What I would like you to do now is go down to your tool bar or your task bar and click on the blue E, which is the icon for the Edge browser. The who? What are you calling it? Edge. Microsoft Edge. E D G E. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought that E meant. Um, that is uh, um, what, what is it? Explorer. Uh, yes, um, Explorer is the old version of Microsoft Browser, but Edge was the new version of the browser, which was faster and everything. And you can see the little thing telling you that down the bottom there. But it was never quite as uh or useful or user friendly as chrome and firefox which is the browsers that most people use do those names sound okay familiar? yeah yep right so what we're going to do now is type in the search bar edge download Edge download, Edge download Windows 10, Edge load That's free. It. Okay. Let's, let's, let's do that. Does that sound like a good search result? Yes, that's fine. Yeah. So which one? Uh, Edge download Windows 10? Yes, let's go for that one. So just click on it. I am. Nothing's happening. Uh, just click a bit harder. Yeah, got it. Okay. And hit the search button. All right, we're there. And that's the important thing that we want to see there. See, see the new icon? Oh, okay. Yep. That is the new Microsoft Edge. So it's still kind of got an essence of the E shape, but it's got the roundness of the Chrome browser on top of it. So um, it looks like it is a, a hybrid Internet Explorer Chrome beast, <laughs> for want of a better word. So. We, now, we want to download this to your computer, so what would we do here? Download now. Okay, let's go. Now, while we're waiting for it to load that page, you can get rid of that notification at the bottom by clicking on Don't Ask Again, because we don't want to make... You need it. Yeah. I didn't even see that. <laughs> no, okay, so what you've done is actually you've just clicked on the cross 
So that's close that notification, but you haven't told it not to come back again. So uh, next time we open Edge, it's going to come back because you didn't really answer the question. You just told it later, dear, later, dear. And, and um, like a child, oh, yeah, yeah. Pop, it's going to come back <laughs> and ask that question again. But that's all fine. So on our screen now, um, we don't have many options to go with, but the one we do have is the obvious one, and that is to download for Windows 10. So here we go. We have to accept their license. And click right. the close button, but we've got a question to answer down the bottom. And mm -hmm. so we've got a couple of choices there. We can either run the program straight away or save the program to our computer and run it at our convenience. Now we want to install the program and use it right now so we can test drive it. So we need to run the program now. So if you click on run, it will download the program and actually start the installation without us having to click any more buttons. So now's a good time to grab a cuppa and um, have a sip. That's the spirit. Just going to check my messages. <laughs> <laughs> now, while you're checking your messages, if you look up at your screen in the taskbar, you can see a little shield that's flashing orange. That means your computer is asking you a question and it wants your attention. Where's the shield? Where are you looking? Uh, the shield is down the bottom. It is orange and blue. It is next to the zoom icon. Oh, yeah. So if you click on okay. that, it's hiding behind our Edge browser at the moment. Yeah. So if you got it, that will bring it to the front and you need to answer the question. Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? Well, I suppose the answer is yes, otherwise it can't run. Is that right? That is correct. The answer is yes. So um, now if that program popped up out of the blue and asked that question and you weren't doing anything, you might say no because uh, it might be something bad running, something you didn't ask about. But because, you know, we've just deliberately downloaded a program and we're ready to install yes. it. We, we know it's okay to go ahead with it. Still important to read um, what it says. It will be saying, do you want Microsoft Edge to do something and whatever. So you go, yes, that's a program. So it's okay. So what's on your screen at the moment? Because all I can see is the browser and in Zoom, it doesn't show me all the pop-up windows. But I can see in the taskbar there is an orange square, so maybe click on that just to bring that in front. It's just say um, getting oh. near Microsoft. It's showing me thirty. Oh, downloading forty minutes remaining. Thirty-eight, thirty-four. Oh. Well, there I just used it. You see, that's why there was only ten seconds left. Yes. <laughs> Six, five, yeah. four, three, two, come on, one. Oh, the download's done. Okay. Uh, so, good job. Yes. So your next instruction is now on the screen. Close and continue. <laughs> uh, you can't wait for me to try it. Wow, I can't wait either. <laughs> interesting changing language from Microsoft. They've gone from very technical to to uh, almost conversational now. So that's an interesting change. Ah. And um, that's a, oh, okay. So that's a good. That's a good. That's a, a good observation you make there because you know, I can't wait to try it. All pumped up. Oh yeah. Yes, and it's going, welcome back. And now it's telling you how your icon is going to change from the old blue E to, you know, I, I said it looks like a merge between the Microsoft Internet Explorer E and Google Chrome. To me, it looks like a blue Firefox. Isn't that interesting? Yes, I see what you mean. It is a cross between the two, isn't it? 
yeah. So anyway, we've been. If you were colour blind, sorry, I was going to say if you were colour blind, well, you might get the two confused. Yes, I might think <laughs> it is Firefox. Although I don't see a Firefox emblem on your um, screen. No, the Chrome. I'm looking at the Chrome one. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we'll have a look at the Firefox logo after this, and then then you'll probably understand understand what I mean. Yes, because I'm I'm not not get, not getting the joke. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Well, it was actually an observation, not a joke. But um, if if you think it's a joke, I'll add it to my repertoire. Yeah, one another one of your dad jokes. <laughs> yes. Speed, privacy, and compatibility without compromise. It's time to get started. Oh. Wow. Now, let's set up the browser with your data. Right. Now, let's take our time and look at this because usually be when a company uh, is giving us a wonderful piece of technology, they'll take every opportunity they can to make this the centerpiece of your operations. In other words, if you just go click, 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 you'll probably end up with the new Microsoft Edge as your default browser and all your settings will yeah. be Microsoft-based. And you'll go, hang on, my computer doesn't work the same as it did yesterday. When did things change? And it, usually you can roll yeah. up to when's the last time a big install took place. Okay, but what we have here is um, the option to import from Google Chrome um, is a good option because all your favorites and everything that you have saved in Google Chrome will transfer across to Microsoft Edge. And actually, if you look in the background, it looks like it's already done it without um, waiting for you to confirm. Yes, because I can see behind this. Um, in your book, in your bookmarks bar. Yeah, don't close it. Don't, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. no, don't worry. I won't touch, won't touch anything I'm not allowed to touch. Yeah, no, yes, okay. it's, that's very mm. interesting to see. So it's made an assumption here. Um, I imagine if you clicked continue without importing, no, don't do it. But I imagine if you did, it would remove all that. But um, Let's just see what happens. So we're going to um, download your default Chrome profile. So click on confirm. Okay, let's set up your new tab page. So based uh, similar to what Firefox and Chrome does, they're trying to make a home page or a new tab page with the most useful information for you. And you've got three options. You can have an inspirational page, which um, is good for thinkers. So it might have um, a nice image or something like that. You can have informational, which is what's selected now. And that would have shortcuts to uh, your most used programs and also a news feed and maybe some weather and I can see that's what's in the background at the moment or you can have focus which just have what's important for you now so let's try those three tabs let's click on inspirational and see what that looks like so you can see behind our little window how it's changed so inspirational like I says has a nice picture with a big search bar up the top and your most used programs or most recently used programs um, list along the bottom. So let's go across the informational again and see how it changes. So it bumps all that up the top and then it puts all the news feeds in that. Now this will be based on channel nine because channel nine has a partnership with Microsoft and nine oh, okay. years. So you've got um, ads, you've got MSNBC, which is a Microsoft network, and and Nine News, you've got a Reuters, a bit of um, um, The Age, which is also a, a Nine program. Now let's click on um, Focused. Oh, that'll be interesting. What do you think is going to be there? Not much. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. 
there we go. Not much at all. Just almost like um, the old Google page. Oh, okay. So I can I can see the point of this. It's not distracting me. It's not wanting me to read everything behind it like the last one was. Like I couldn't. I was just constantly reading everything with the other one because it was informational. This one I can just stay focused on whatever I want. Yeah, yeah, and that's so. Uh, Microsoft has taken them a long time, but they've actually started to listen to the people. And the way they did that is by watching how many people were choosing not to use their browser, and and uh, and then they looked at what they were using. Um, and usually it's not not really easy for the average person to change away from a different browser to change their search engine because I, I can pretty much guarantee the search engine will be the Bing search engine, which is Microsoft's. Um, that's probably one thing that they haven't handed over to Google. We'll, we'll find out. We'll have a look in a minute once we press confirm. But um, traditionally, it's been pretty hard to change away from um, the default browser that Microsoft puts in there. And so every time you would open Edge in the past or Internet Explorer, you get their, their Microsoft page full of all the news and all that sort of thing and uh, yeah. a link to their Outlook account instead of Gmail. And um, yeah, you sort of get lost in all their products. And um, so you the chances are good that you're going to actually stay with it if you you know don't have the time or the knowledge or the the energy to put put in to sort of make the change so yeah, yeah that's right let's, let's click on confirm and see what we've got to play with and we'll take it for a test run okay well, we're getting across we've got two more dots to go if you have a look um, see your favorites, passwords, and more on any device. So sync your browser data across your sync devices using your Gmail address. And click on where it says customize sync settings. I want to see what they actually mean there. Um, that could be a secret way of, of installing <laughs> Microsoft programs all over your computer and your tablets and everything else okay um favorite like extensions so nothing about them um, adding software to your phones and that so that's probably okay so if you're comfortable with that just click on apply so basically it's going to it's going to have the same settings in this browser as what's in your chrome one so i don't have any problem with that and if you don't have a problem with that um let's go now we've got one more confirm button to press. Browse the data cross layer. Oh, oh. Yeah, so can... yes, go press it. Yeah. I wouldn't dare press it without your permission, David. Uh, no, well, we've just talked about it and you nodded your head. So um, that tells me, are you comfortable to have your favorites and passwords? And everything you've got in your Chrome browser is synchronized with uh, Microsoft Edge. <laughs> is this is this forever? <laughs> <laughs> so can you undo what I'm? Uh, I guess what I'm saying now is really can you undo? I mean, I'm assuming you can undo these things when um, if you change your mind at some point. Yes, yes, you can. So basically, you just go into your settings. Um, and how he's, he's had their last grab here and you can, ch you can, you can change all of these. All you got to do is go into your account settings for Microsoft or, or in the edge browser itself and just say, no, you can do the same with Chrome as well. Going into the Chrome settings, uh, going to the privacy area and you can unsync your account and, and just sign out and basically just by signing out, um, you'll stop the synchronization as well. Uh, but usually with most of these things, you have to give away a little bit of privacy in order to have uh, a reasonable browsing experience. And, you know, that's the price you pay to use their product. 
So improved personalization of advertising, search news, and other Microsoft services by allowing Microsoft to use your browsing history from this account. Well, there's not much history, but uh, if you're happy to do that, you can do that. Once again, that's like the more information you hand over, the better your experience will be using the browser. If you're comfortable. Yes. Mm, yeah. No. Oh. I'm, I'm not experiencing any severe discomfort at this point in time. Very good. Take a deep breath and we'll continue. <laughs> Okay, so now we look looks like we can see some synchronization taking place and I see a few tabs opening up the top there and There's a message in the top right corner saying we've imported your extensions to the new Microsoft Edge Now this is one thing that I was quite excited about because the reason why I've stuck with Chrome for so long is because I use a lot of the extensions that um, uh, that were previously only available on Chrome. Now I know Firefox had a lot of extensions too, but uh, a lot of the Google-based extensions uh, were useful to me and I used them for, for my business. So, and I've already experimented with this and knowing that these extensions are going to work on this browser excites me a little bit, so uh, I'm keen to try it out. So if you want to, you can click on turn on extensions and uh, we'll see how we go. Well, I have no idea what you're talking about, but let's do it anyway because I don't know what these extensions are. <laughs> Allow extensions from other stores? Uh, yes, please. <laughs> Okay, so I've got some options here. Select a tutorial below to learn about the new Microsoft Edge in a few quick steps. Find your favorites installing extensions, try collections. Okay, so let's watch that. Is that a movie? Let's scroll up a little bit. Oh, okay. I was hoping there was going to be shortcuts somewhere. <laughs> Well, there are. You got you got your three buttons. Find your. Yeah, button. you're you're the shortcut. You're my shortcut, David. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think you need to click on. Yeah, thank you. It was all highlighted. So, so scroll down. Is there anything underneath that, or is that is that all there? No, is? that's it. It's a full. It's a that's full a screen. Picture. Nothing. Won't go down. Okay, so click on find your favourites. Oh, we'll hang on. Maybe I can lift this one. I lift this up. No, nothing moves. No. Nah. All right, click on find your favorites and we'll see what comes up. Oh. Ah, the there favorites you go. Here. It's showing you They're where here. your favorites. And so make a note of what the icon is. This is where you'll find your favorites. If something is missing, look for it in other favorites. So that's very similar to the, the toolbar favorites that flow over the edge in Chrome when you put too many on there. So you've got the other favorites button down the bottom. So let's click on continue. Find your favorite, favorite bar in the setting menu. Okay. That's, right. That's what settings bars looks like these days. They're three dots. They, they were a hamburger before then. And they were a spanner before then, and they were a cog before that. And they used to say settings before all this happened. Ah, oh, I don't know. Beards and tofu. Baristas. A, ham a hamburger's not politically correct to be using as anything, really. No, it's just three lines, but they called it the hamburger menu. Whoever they are. Oh, oh. Because it's stacked up? Why, why was it called a hamburger menu? Uh, because usually it consisted of at least three lines. So the bottom line would be the bottom part of the bun. The middle line would be the burger and the salad and the sauce and the beetroot and the eggs and whatever else you wanted to put in there. And the top line was obviously the top of the bun. So it was called the hamburger bun. I noticed, I was licking my lips then. 
<laughs> and the thing about the McDonald's hamburger. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, there you go. I, I, I would have Hungry Jacks over McDonald's, but, uh, you know. Be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, some people are Apple and some people are Android. Right, let's click on oh. install extensions and have a look there. Once again, your extensions can be managed by the settings menu. Let's click on the settings menu and have a look. Okay, so click on extensions. We'll have a look. It's taking us through the um, options you can do with extensions. Extensions from Okay, so what they've got here is they're equivalent to um, Google's Chrome Red uh, Web Store, um, which has got a lot of the things that you could actually get on Google Play or Android. In fact, more Android programs are coming across to the Google browser. Um, so Microsoft has got their own Microsoft store and you can see the shopping bag down the bottom in your taskbar. See the little shopping cart with the Microsoft logo on it? Ah, this little number here. That little number there. So um, we can have a look at that later on, but let's click on get extensions from the Microsoft store and see what it, it, it brings up for us, see what it shows us. Yeah, so it's bringing up. Uh... <laughs> this, this, is, this is like going down a rabbit hole, seriously. It's, it's a tutorial. It's just, it's just, you can see I don't do tutorials, can't you? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, you learn about them. When, when you do a Bachelor of Education, you, um, you learn all about tutorials and how they work. And uh, basically, you're, you're going on a guided tour. <laughs> so here it's, it's showing you how to install the Bing extension. Now, Bing is Microsoft's search engine. And I did mention that earlier. I said, um, uh, Microsoft will try pretty hard to keep you in their um, little Microsoft world by um, installing all the Microsoft programs. So let's click on select an extension to go to the details page where you can learn more and install. So let's click on Bing. Yeah, that's B for Bing. And okay. I want to see if this stays the tutorial or whether it actually tricks you into installing Bing. <laughs> let's see yes, how we go. Let's see. So let's click on get. So what am I? Mm -hmm. After you have installed them, your extensions will appear here. I'm looking at the real machine here. No, nothing's happened. <laughs> so let's click on done. Okay, so that was your tutorial about extensions. So did you understand any of that? Um, I think the honest answer is I'm not sure, really. Okay, so if, if I just said extensions are uh, exactly what that word is, they're little... Yeah pieces of software that can be bolted onto your browser as extensions um, to improve or alter the functionality of, of your browser. In other words, um, it's a bit like a, a robot. You're adding an extra arm or something like that, or um, you're adding a search engine, you're adding lights, you're adding sound, you know, things like that. It's just adding extra features to essentially is just a search engine in the first place. So that's mm -hmm. extensions. Now let's have a look at collections because I'm quite interested to see what collections are. Click here to start a collection. Okay, so yes. what's, that, what's that telling you so far? 
Oh, here we go. Collections allow you to collect, save and share content you find on the web. Click start a new collection to begin. So this sounds like it could be a useful research tool. If you were on a project or something and you wanted to find information about specific things. Uh, I can see one example there, um, shopping, uh, people are looking for some boots. They would uh, get collections from different stores and what have you. I can see travel there. Now that is one area where I can see collections that will get used quite frequently. So let's click on start a new collection and see how it works for us. Start a new collection. Right. So what do we got? Look. The name. So what could we? What could we start a collection about? Uh, what would be useful? Uh, sausages? <laughs> no, okay. <laughs> Hamburgers. <laughs> oh, non food related. Well, what about um, travel? Uh, is there a place uh, you want to go to? I mean, I is, there, is, there a is there a place I want to go to? <laughs> yeah. No, the question for me is is there a place I don't want to go to? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'd go, go anywhere right now. <laughs> anywhere they'll let me go. Oh, let's, let's, let's just say you want to go to Ballarat. Uh, there's a good chance I will go to Ballarat, actually. All right. So, new collection about Ballarat? Yeah, I would just say Victoria, even if you want to make it very general. Well, that's the only place we're allowed to go, isn't it, Victoria? Yeah. Although we're not even allowed to go to some parts of Victoria. Huh. Uh, at, at a current page. What, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to... Uh, you, you, you're trying to put a name where it says new collection. You, no, no. You, let's play, play within the rules of the tutorial. So type something over collection. Oh, I'm trying to. It won't let me. I won't let you. No. Maybe because it is a tutorial and the only thing you can put there is new collection. So let's click on continue. That's what I wanted to find out. I thought it was this dynamic or whether it is guided. So there you oh, are. Yes. You're meant to put okay. you should have known. Because it's you're right, because it's a tutorial. Yes. So now let's right, so. do the obvious at a current page. Okay. Right. Yeah, we want that camera there because it's got the little green light on it and the other ones haven't. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. We're creating a note by selecting note box. Oh, let's create a note, shall we? Mm -hmm. Learned about collections in mind. Done. Okay, we've done. Very good. Now we, I'll never have to do that again. I've done it once. <laughs> <laughs> right, so click on done and we'll actually try this in the wild. We'll see how we go. All right, what are we done now? Where are we up to? <laughs> oh, we've got to, we've got, of course, we've always got to, we've always got to do a, uh, um, an evaluation. <laughs> Yes, we do. So let's start off by clicking on the home button and see where that takes us. Because you usually start your search from the home button, don't you? Um, I search for what, David? Well, we'll get to that when we get to the home button. All right. So which home button do you want? The one that is a picture of a house. Oh, okay. Oh, right up there. Uh, okay. Yes, uh, because that is that is the steering wheel and the control panel of your um, browser. So, you know, your navigation forward and back, refresh, and your home button are all located there. And that's pretty much the same with all the browsers that you will use. They have those same functions along the top there. 
So now we've hit the home button and we're on the home page that you selected, which is the focused one because you can't be distracted by pretty pictures and news articles. Ah, uh, yes. And the weather and the news. Although along the bottom, you can see there's a list of all those things, including the coronavirus, the top stories, the news, uh, entertainment and lifestyle and lots of other distraction. And notice it's all powered by Microsoft News. And that is the difference between uh, that and Google.